Blog Talk Radio. You have tuned into the Post Trip Network Radio with Pastors Mike and Grand Perry. Tune in as they bring forth biblical prophecy and end times. All right, all right. Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing this evening? Uh, tonight we've got some uh, great show coming. Hopefully, we bring forth some more of the Word of God and to be able to uh, show you the truth about what Christ says in His Word. I'm going to bring on uh, on the air with me right now, Brother Ricky. Brother Ricky, you there? Oh yeah. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here tonight, and um, real excited about Jesus. All right. Awesome. 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 Well, I thought we'd get started here. We're going to be talking about, you know, we talked last night about, you know, Jesus coming after the tribulation, and we're going to bring forth about Jesus coming to the last day. Now, the first thing people are going to say, well, no man knows the day or the hour, and that is so true. We cannot give you the exact date and time of Jesus coming, but we do know the times of the season. You know, that's what he told us to do. He showed us, because when the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, you know, what will be the sign of thy coming into the world, Jesus began to tell them. But we're going to talk about, does Jesus tell us, um, is it going to be seven years uh, during the tribulation? Are we going to be raptured out of here? You know, are we going to be off the earth, you know, in heaven? What does the scripture say about when Jesus is going to raise us up? They call it the rapture, but the word of God calls it the resurrection. When is this event going to happen? That's where we're going to get into scripture at. We're going to start with John and John 6, okay? And this is Jesus talking. And Jesus says, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Now, to, to raise up or to raise again, that is what the resurrection is, to be raised from the dead. So, so Jesus making it very clear this is going to happen on the last day. Now, if this happened seven years before, it's not the last day. In verse uh, 40, he says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. In verse 44, again, Jesus says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, for the fourth time, Jesus says in verse 54, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up, when? At the last day. And verse 54, he says, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now here we got, in, in John eleven twenty four, so there's four times there that Jesus has said he's going he's going to do this event. It's going to be the last day. We just don't know when the last day is. We know it's after the tribulation, so we can't pinpoint. Okay, it's right here, you know, and mark it on our calendars. We can't do that. But John eleven twenty four, Martha and Jesus talking about her brother Lazarus, and Martha says to Jesus, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So here we got Jesus making it very clear that this raise it up, raise again, I'm going to raise him up, and rise again is all going to happen. The resurrection is going to happen the last day. He also tells us in John 12, 48, He that rejected me and received not my word has one that judges him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So not only do we see Jesus coming on the last day, we see where we're going to be raised again, resurrected on the last day, and then we see that judgment is going to happen on the last day. So when we begin to see these things taking place here and we see what the Lord has to say about that, we can't believe that Jesus is coming, you know, if you believe that the the tribulation is for seven years, which Scripture tells us is for three and a half years. So if you're believing that the rapture is going to happen seven years before Uh, or three and a half years before, that does not line up with what scriptures just said that Jesus is going to do this at the last day. Ricky, you got anything? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, even even, uh, in Genesis, what is classified as a day uh, in the book of Genesis, we all read uh, read where God created the heaven and the earth. And if you notice in them verses, the evening and the morning was 
considered a day. You know, the even in the morning was considered a day. Now, on what you're saying here, if if there is a seven year or a thousand year what some are teaching. That means there's going to be evening and mornings there, and that's going to be classified as more days. That won't be the last day. And, and you know, understand what the word is saying, you know. I know that a lot of people are saying, oh, well, when uh, when when, uh, when the Lord comes back, uh, uh, there, there'll be no more night for the saints. You know, we're going to be right there. And be, well, think about it now. That's not true. Uh, evening and morning is classified as a day, and, and last day means last day. And, you know, you've got to read the Word. You've got to put all the Scriptures together. You can't just take one part and say, well, that's how I'm going to do. We've got to take every part of the Scriptures and, and put them together and rightly divide the Word of Truth to, to get the truth out of it because you can be easily deceived. Back to you. Well, well, exactly, exactly, and that's what we want. To, that's why we want to go to Scripture. Now, you notice that the last one that we talked about there in John 11 it talked about that he's going to judge them in the last days. So let's look and see if there's any proof of that. Do we see any other proof of where the judgment of God is going to come on that? If you look at Matthew 10:15, he said, Very I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Talking about judgment day. Also remember, it tells us that, you know, the same time that, that Lot and, and, and his daughter, because his wife turned around, come out of Sodom and Gomorrah, God rained uh, fire and brimstone down on Lot. God's judgment came the same time that he got them out. The same time that Noah entered that ark and God shut him in, it rained. So, you know, the flood came. So we see what's going on is is when, when, when the Lord comes, um, we see the wrath of God being poured out at the, sa- the same day. So that's lining up with Scripture as, the resurrection, the judgment, and things like that, it being on the same day. Because he said, you know, that the coming of Son of Eve will be as the days of Lot and as the days of Noah. So that's what we, So how was it done in the days of Lot? How was it done in the days of Noah? The same day. So it makes perfect sense when we begin to see, um, you know, these events take place and we see what's happening and we see that it's the same day, that it's not, you know, um, uh, different days, and that's why it's called the day of the Lord. That's why it's called the day of Christ. I mean, we get to looking in Scripture, and you're going to find out the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, a thief in a night, the day of wrath, the coming and great and uh, ter- dreadful day of the Lord it's called, the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of the Lord, the coming of the day of God, the last day, the great day, the day of judgment, the day of wrath, the day, that day it's called, the day of the trumpet is all the same day. And that's why we want to take a look at it and see what scripture. Now, this is on our site. If you want to go and check it out, you can find it at www.posttribnetwork.org. And just look for the study. As soon as you go there, you'll see the studies. And look for the study that's called The Same Day. And you can see all the scriptures there that we have. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email us at posttribnetwork at gmail.com, and, and uh, we do answer questions as well, too, and you can also find our Freaking Ask Questions database of questions that we've already been asked. But, you know, as we begin to see this, it talks about, uh, you look at, like, let's say, the thief in the night. It tells us that for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall so come as a thief in the night. Now, pre-tribbers believe that, Christ is coming as a thief. It tells us that you, you know, that we're not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So, you know, he's going to come as a thief to those that are in darkness. But it's called, the main thing I want to point out is it's called the day of the Lord. And when you do look up scriptures about the day of the Lord, you're going to find out it says, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 13, the prophet Isaiah, we're talking about, how ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it, and it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. See, look at what's talking about. What's the destruction from the Almighty talking about? The wrath of God. So the day of the Lord is when he'll bring his wrath. And so as we see what's going on, what's happening, Christ comes. We see the wrath of God being poured out upon the wicked. And then, and then what do we see going to happen? The dead in Christ rise first. Judgment, the just and the unjust, you know, are going to come up out of the grave. They're going to stand for the judgment seat of Christ. So as we see these days coming together, 
we begin to see what's going on. And you begin to see that these are all the same event, the coming of Christ, the, the, um, the wrath of God, the resurrection of the just and the unjust, the judgment seat, all these the same day. And something that you brought up, Ricky, is what's really interesting here, too, is that, you know, it's called, you know, that day, one year is a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is one day. And it tells the scripture there will be no night in the kingdom. That day is going to go on forever. So this day that we're talking about, it's going to continue forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And and that's why, because it says that the Lamb is a light thereof. So we can understand what's taking place here and what's happening here. You see, if not the Father's will, that any should perish. We were reading in the chat room scripture today about about how, you know, the Lord has no pleasure in, in um, oh, what was that word they used? Uh, the, the Lord has no pleasure in... Um, the death of the wicked. You know, he has no pleasure in that whatsoever. It's not the will that the Father's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's why he gave a time limit for Noah to build that ark, you know, that 120 years. He gave man a chance to repent. They could have gone on the ark, but they chose not to. Everyone's given the opportunity to come in through the door, which is Christ. And yet, you know, that's why it's coming on the last day, because it's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He's given us the opportunity for all of us to repent, to turn to him with all of our hearts, you know, to turn to him, to worship him as the one true God, to, to give up the things of this world and choose him. So, you know, I mean, I mean, we see these things happening, you know, to say that he's going to come seven years before. Well, that's not the last day. If I told you I was coming on the last day, you wouldn't expect me on uh, the last day of the week I was coming to visit you. You wouldn't be expecting me on Sunday or Monday. You would be expecting me the last day, which would happen to be Saturday, you know, of the week. So, you know, that's what we got to stop. It. The Lord said the last day, and he said it four times. And then Martha even said it to the Lord. And, and that's when the Lord told him, I am the resurrection. And we know that takes part, that, that takes happens on the last day, which is called the day of the Lord. And as we as we see that, in Scripture, if you begin to look at that, you know, open up your Bibles. Look up these things for yourself. Don't take our word. Take his word. You know, that's all we're trying to do is show you. It's also called the day of Christ. It tells us that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain. Talk about running the race, of course. Neither labored in vain. 2 Thessalonians 2 T tells us that you be not so soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as much as the day of Christ is at hand. The same day, the last day, the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, the thief and night. These are all the same events. Uh, your turn, Ricky. Absolutely. And uh, what what we got to realize, too, you know, it's it's called the day of the Lord. It's called the last day. Uh, uh, and also it's called the harvest. If you go look up the harvest and, and look up all the scripture concerning the harvest, uh, uh, remember remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 29 through 31, about when he'll come after the tribulation period. And, you know, that uh, immediately after the tribulation, uh, you know, it talks about the moon will turn into to blood, you know, the sun won't give us light. And then you shall see the Son of Man come in the clouds of glory. And then it says also, then you shall see the angels go and gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. Understand this. This is the harvest. If you go back and look at the parable of the harvest, you will find also that uh, the angels are the reapers. So this also connects to Matthew 24 when it talks about after the tribulation he'll come and his angels will get the elect from the four parts of the earth. It all connects together. It's called the day of the Lord, the last day, the harvest. Everything connects together in these scriptures. Back to you. Exactly, exactly. And we're just giving you some food for thought, you know, to get you um, stirred up here, to get you searching those scriptures, you know, to get you studying the word of God. And, and, and you know, listeners, you know, well, we're just sharing these things with you because, you know, these are things that we discuss. You know, we go to our chat room, 
you know, we discuss things like this. We we do Bible studies, and then we go and we, we share them one with another. It's also called the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord. And Malachi 4, 5, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord. Why? Because God's wrath is coming. It's also called the day of wrath. Job 21, 30 tells us that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction that it should be brought forth of the day of wrath. Proverbs tells us in 11, 4, riches profit not on the day of wrath. Uh oh, why is talking about riches profit not on the day of wrath? What would it cost for a man to, to gain the whole world and lose his very soul? See, that's what Satan's going to tempt us with is things of this world. You know, in order to buy and sell, you've got to take his mark, worship the beast. So that's why in Proverbs are saying, riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteous delivers the soul from death. That's not 1 through, uh, 15 says the day is a day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloomness, a day of the clouds and thick darkness. Romans 2, 5 says, but after thy hardness and intimate heart, treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. There's the judgment again we just talked about. See, the, the scriptures are lining up all the way from old to new. It's also called the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus told us in Matthew twenty four twenty seven, for as lightning cometh out of the east and shines into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew twenty four thirty seven he says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Remember what we said about the days of Noah? The same day that Noah and his family got on that ark and God shut him in, it rained. The flood came. So it's gonna be the same way. God's wrath's gonna come immediately that same day. Matthew twenty nine thirty nine and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also come and made a beast. Where did he take away? They took away the wicked. The flood destroyed the wicked. This makes perfect sense and lines right up with Scripture. It's also called the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians one seven says, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians three thirteen. To the end, he may establish your heart unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be reserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what they're saying? Until the rapture? No, no, no. And to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the last day after the tribulation. Scripture is lining up. Second Thessalonians 2 1. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him. There we go again. Second Peter 1 16. For we have not followed cunningly devices fables, devised fables, when we made known unto you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitness of his majesty. So you see what I'm talking about? These are all the same scriptures. And again, go to the site at www.posternetwork.org and look at the studies, and the name of the study is called The Same Day. All these scriptures, there's 100 scriptures we have found in the Word of God proving these things that we're talking about, that this event all happens on the same day. These are all the same events, and they're being recorded by the prophet by Jesus Christ himself, by Paul, by John, by Peter, by James, by all of them are saying the exact same thing. And so this is why we've got to stand on the word of God and his truth. So so go there and read the word of God. Believe the word of God. We're not telling you to believe us. Believe the word. That's what we're telling you to do. But there's 100 scriptures there that shows this truth. So people can understand See, we can't believe something because somebody taught it. We must believe it because Jesus Christ, by his spirit, has showed us his truth. And this is where we have to stand. If we believe something, if our belief does not line up with the word of God, it's our belief that needs to be changed and never the word of God. The word of God, it will stand forever. It's never going to pass away. And so our beliefs must match up with the word of God to know, and we really got to check our beliefs. Back to you. And absolutely, and in, in 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 order to really back up the belief, you know, I I understand 
this, I, uh, and I said this last night on the air, and I want to emphasize, it's real easy to let somebody else do your studying for you, but this is not doing you no good. It's not doing you no good just taking a Sunday school teacher's word for it. It's not doing no good just taking some pastor's word for it. You need to study the word of God for yourself. And if you are sitting in a place and being fed by someone who is not backing what they say by scriptures, and you and you study the word and you say and you see they're not backing up by scriptures, and they're teaching you another doctrine, it's your responsibility to get up and get out, get away from that place, come out from among the false teachings. Because I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said, "A little leaven leaveneth the whole loaf," and if and folks, you can't just just be satisfied with part truths. You've got to be you've got to have the whole truth and, and study the word of God for yourself. Quit just forget about what you've been told by Sunday school teachers. Forget about what you've been told by pastors. Go to this site that she told you about and study it for yourself. Look at it for yourself. Let the scripture speak to you. And I guarantee you if you'll open your heart, you'll see what we're telling you is the truth. Back to you. Exactly, exactly, too. You know, and, and it's also called, it's going to give a few more here for you. It's called the coming day of God. Second Peter 3.12, looking for and hasting unto the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall dissolve and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You know, you know, we talked about this a little bit in chapter the other day. Is, you know, if the, if the heavens are going to uh, dissolve, okay, <laughs> and the heavens are going to be no more. Where are you going to be raptured to if the heavens are gone and the earth is being burned up? You know that's something to really think about, and we'll get into that probably maybe on the either either tomorrow or Thursday about where are we going to be at? Where is the hiding place? We really want to get into that discussion as well too, because if Christ comes on the last day and we know that the heavens are are dissolved. And we know that the, the earth is burned up with, with, with uh, you know, because it's going to destroy everything, the wickedness with the brightness of its coming. Where are the Christians at? What happened to them? You know, we'll get more into that, like I said, the next time. But, you know, get in there and study. It's also called the great day of God. Zephaniah tells us the great day of the, uh, the, of the Lord is near. It is near. And I hate the great me. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. bitterly. John seven thirty seven. In the last day, did you hear that? In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Jude 1, 6, And the angels which kept not the first estate, but left their own inhabitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains of darkness. And to when? The judgment of the great day. That's the same day. That's the same day we've been talking about. That that last day, the day of Christ, the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, all this is the same thing. That's why it's saying this. And it tells us, Revelation six seventeen, for the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to say, see, it's the day of wrath. They're all saying the same thing. And we're going all the way from, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. And it's saying the exact same thing. Uh, Revelation sixteen fourteen tells us, for they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them for battle of that great day of God Almighty. See? So when you begin to see these things and it's coming together, you're like, wow. You know, it's coming together. Uh, and we begin to see these things happening. There's so many scriptures it's called the day of the trumpet. Isaiah 27, 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that, uh, that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of, of Azra and outcast in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in his holy mountain at Jerusalem. Joe 2, 1, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. You see the trumpet in there? It's all saying the same thing. Nehemiah 4, 20 says, in what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, restore ye thither, 
unto us. Our God shall fight for us. See, Psalm 47, 5. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord will sound a trumpet. So, I mean, there's so many scriptures that tell this truth about his coming. And then you can understand and, and know it says, as in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in the marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day, did you hear that? The same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, which the Son of Man is Jesus. So see, in the same way as it was with Noah Lot, the same way days of Noah, it will be that way. The same day when Christ comes, his wrath comes. We've got to understand that. God comes, which is Jesus Christ. He comes. His wrath is poured out. We see, we see where, where the dead in Christ will be raised, the just and the unjust, it says, will be resurrected, you know, will be, uh, you know, um, raised from the dead. To stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We all stand for the all, you know, only wants to die and bend to judgment. So as we see these events coming together and happening, you can see it. Again, go take a look. Go take a look. If you want to get together with us, you can get together with us. We get Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock Central Time. We have a live chat over at paltalk.com. Look for us on Facebook. You can find us. Um, just When you go to Facebook, type in a group called uh Christians preparing for the tribulation. Or no, I'm sorry, it's called End Time Watchers. That's our, our chat room. The other End Time Watchers. You can also type in Post Tribber, and my nick will show up on Facebook, and you can you can add to that way as well too. There's many places that you can find us online. You can subscribe to us uh, to our YouTube channel, Post Trib Network. We're also PTN Radio is also on Twitter. You know, but you can find all that on our site. Just go to our site at www.posttribnetwork.org. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at posttribnetwork at gmail.com. I'm going to give uh, Brother Ricky a chance to say his uh, goodbyes. Well, we appreciate you all being here. Please study the work for yourself. God bless you. Back to you. All right, and, and God bless you also, Ricky, Rachel, your household, and thank you so much for being here. Hey, y'all, we love y'all. We're so grateful to have y'all here with us. We hope that you have learned. You can you can replay this. It'll be in our ar- archives as well, too, and you can replay this many times you need to. You can stop it, you know, to take notes, whatever you do. Open up the Word of God. We use the King James Bible. Open up the Word of God and look for yourself. See if these things be true. Jesus loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next time, tomorrow night, 10 o'clock time, God willing. God bless you.